Hi everyone, my name is Yuki. Welcome to this session to learn Rancher Desktop. Some of you might be using Docker Desktop today and are curious if there's any alternative out there. Well, this session will give you some idea and present a great option for that. First of all, I'm gonna explain what Rancher Desktop is. The installation is quite easy, so we'll just go through that very briefly. And then there's a live demo. This is a tutorial session, so I strongly encourage you to follow along and get some hands-on experience. A little bit about me. I'm a sales engineer based in Toronto, Canada. I joined SUSE three years ago, and previously I worked in Cisco in their data center and cloud team. So I spent about six years helping enterprise customers with hybrid cloud strategies, from private cloud to public cloud to hybrid cloud. And now everyone's embracing microservices and moving towards containers and Kubernetes on top of those infrastructure. It's very exciting to see the journey of this transformation. Many people come to us and ask if Rancher has any tools to help developers test their applications in Kubernetes on the laptops. The answer is yes. Rancher Desktop makes it possible for developers to run Kubernetes and containers on their desktop. But Rancher Desktop is not Rancher on the desktop. They do different things. Rancher is a great solution to manage many Kubernetes clusters. And Rancher Desktop is your local Kubernetes development environment. Some of you might use Docker Desktop today. However, Docker is charging for that. Um, it has never been fully open source. And Rancher Desktop is completely open source. It's free to download. It's free to use. So I strongly encourage you to try it. And we know getting started with uh, Kubernetes on the desktop can be quite complicated, right? Especially if you want to match the version uh, you run locally to the version you run in production. And that's why SUSE created Rancher Desktop. We originally wanted to bring Kubernetes as a desktop application and make it easy for people to work with. Very lightweight, very user-friendly with a graphical user interface. One challenge we see from Docker Desktop is that you get only one version of Kubernetes, right? This version often doesn't match the version people run in, in the production. There are so many versions of Kubernetes are in use today, and different versions could be different. You test one version of Kubernetes in the local environment, and then you bring your workload to a different version, things could break, okay? So we solve that issue in Rancher Desktop you have the flexibility to choose the version you are running today. Uh, we offer many versions of Kubernetes, so you can choose a version that you are using in production and test with that version. Or another use case is that you can test with different versions. That seamless upgrade is also very important. You can test out applications across the version changes, so you'll be able to test your workload when Kubernetes is upgraded and you'll find out if anything breaks after you upgrade your cluster. You'll be able to see what happens to your applications once you upgrade that environment, okay? That way you can make sure everything works smoothly when you upgrade from one version to the next. And then easy installation. You can just download installers and set it up on Windows, Mac, and a Linux machine. Container tool chain. You can build, you can push and pull container images. You can test an application in containers and in Kubernetes. So you can do that without pushing your images to a registry and then repo them into Kubernetes. So you don't have to do that. We also leverage um, upstream projects. Again, it's completely open source, no hidden magic. Here's the architecture, how it works under the hood. Rancher Desktop basically bundles a bunch of other utilities, like everything you see here, Nerdy Control, Cube Control, Helm, and Docker CLI. Nerdy Control is a Docker-compatible CLI that works with ContainerD engine. So it's the way to build images when you use Rancher Desktop with ContainerD. There's Cube Control, um, which is your Kubernetes command line, and Helm, the package manager. We also have Docker CLI, which works with contain, uh, Docker D container runtime, 
So you have two options there, nerdy control for container D or Docker CLI for Docker D. When you run um, Rancher desktop, it will spin up a virtual machine, okay? When it's on Mac or Linux, it uses QEMU through Lima, which is also open source. It promotes container D, including uh, nerdy control to Mac users. And inside that environment, Rancher Desktop launches K3S, a very lightweight Kubernetes distribution. So it doesn't really have many services running. It doesn't take much resource from your local machine. Now that's on the Mac or Linux side. On Windows, we leverage Windows subsystem for Linux. The great thing about that is you don't need a special Windows license to run Rancher Desktop. Okay, you don't have to be Windows Server users or professional users. Every Windows user is able to install and use Rancher Desktop. It's also very clean setup. And if you don't want to use the environment, if you want to remove it, you can do it very cleanly without having any impact on the whole system. Again, it's very easy to set up. You just run it as a desktop application in Mac, Windows and Linux. We know a lot of people still use Windows or Mac as their uh, development environment. It's, it's very common, right? We have all these options available. Just go to the website and you'll find the installers and, inst and instructions. Here are some key features that Rancher Desktop delivers. You can work with images and containers. We support both Container D and Docker D. So if you use Containerd runtime, um, then you just choose Nerdy Control. Or if you use Mobi runtime, there's container, there's Docker CLI for you. And WSCI integration on Windows. Once you enable this in Rancher Desktop, in your WSL, you can talk to the K3S Kubernetes cluster. You can run Kube Control in the Linux system and interact with the Kubernetes cluster that your Rancher desktop creates. Now let's go through the installation process. I'll show you an example of installation on Windows. First of all, make sure to turn on Virtual Machine Platform and Windows Subsystem for Linux. So in your Windows machine, go to the search and type turn Windows features on or off, and you can find these two features there. They should be on by default. However, it's good to check because Rancher Desktop will use these two features. And then you go to the Rancher Desktop website and download the installer. And you can just run that installer. After it's installed, you have access to utilities like Helm, Cube Control, Nerdy Control, and Docker for a Mobi runtime. You can choose a Kubernetes version to start with. You can choose a Docker runtime, right? It may take a minute to load. And then you get Rancher Desktop with a UI. If you click um, Kubernetes settings, you can see a list of different Kubernetes versions. You can switch versions. You can select the version from the drop down menu. By default, Kubernetes is enabled. You can also disable it. If you disable the Kubernetes, you just run. You cannot run Kubernetes. You just run either Container D or Docker D. Okay, and Container Runtime. So only one Container Runtime will function at a time. So you choose either Container D or Docker D. Um, you can change to a different runtime later, but it will restart your Kubernetes. And then Reset Kubernetes is also available if you want to test with a completely fresh cluster and that reset will delete all your workloads and configurations and will give you a completely new cluster to start with. The image that you have pulled are still available to you. That's not removed. If you test and run a few commands in your Windows terminal, like Cube Control, you see the Kubernetes cluster that Rancher Desktop launched. Um, and these tools like a uh, Kube Control or Helm or Docker CLI are all installed through Rancher Desktop. You could also check your container image from uh, Rancher Desktop UI. 
So you can see a list of images here, right? Um, there's image scan for vulnerabilities and configuration issues. If you click this three dots by, by the image, you run that scan and get a result if anything is misconfigured if, or if any dependency has security risk. Um, you can also add your image by clicking this Add button. You can pull images um, after you, you click that button. By default, it's from the Docker Hub. You can also pull from other repositories. If you have your own private repository, you just need to add the host name there. You can also build an image, right? Enter a name for your new image. If you also run a WSL distribution um, and want to interact with this Kubernetes cluster from there, you can enable the integration. If you check the box and when you run kube control in your Linux system, then you get a response from, from your Kubernetes. And you can see that I have um, a couple of systems here, right? If you uncheck the box and disable the integration, you won't be able to talk to the cluster when you run the same command in your WSL distribution. All right, now I'm gonna run a demo. I'm gonna show you how you can build a container image, run it in containers, and also deploy it in Kubernetes, all from Rancher Desktop. So I selected the container D runtime, so I'll be running Nerdy Control. There's also an option if you want to use Docker CLI and Mobi runtime. I'm gonna build a hello world level of container image. I have an HTML file and a Docker file, and then build an image locally without pushing it to any registry. And after that, I'll run the image in a container and also run a pod in Kubernetes. Okay, all right, now let's switch to the demo. Let's build an image first in this directory. I have an HTML file and a Docker file. So it's a hello world from Susakal. Now let's go ahead and build an image. Um, we can build an image for local Kubernetes without using registry. I'm running on container D, so I'm using nerdy control. So I'm gonna run nerdy control. Build an image. We call it Hello World Latest. Um, so Nerdy Control has a namespace, just like Kubernetes namespace. So in this case, I added the namespace there, right? Otherwise, it would just go to your default namespace. Um, now it's built. Let's take a look. I run nerdy control, add that namespace, and then list all the images here. Um, nerdy control, okay. Now you can see my um, hello world image I just built. It's all the way here. This is the image we just built, right? Okay. So keep in mind that all container, all Kubernetes container image are in this container D namespace. Um, if we go to the Rancher UI, you can also see my image here. So same namespace, and this is the image I just built. Okay. Now, if we click namespace here, you can find there are more than one namespaces. You can actually uh, create or delete a namespace with a nerdy control. So let me show that quickly in your command line cleanup. If you run nerdy control, namespace create i'm gonna create a new one and you can check that namespace the list 
That's how you create a namespace in uh, container D, okay? And then if you come here, if I check here, you can also see my namespace from the Rancher desktop. Um, you can actually add an image and see Nginx, Nginx latest. It will pull image from Docker Hub, okay? And after that, you can see the image is under my, um, my new namespace. You could also come here and scan the image and get a report here. All right. Now I go back to my terminal and run um, nerdy control to my new namespace and list the images. Here you go, you can find this image, um, the Nginx image we just pulled from Docker Hub. All right. Now let's go ahead and run the image that we built earlier in the ks.io namespace. Um, let's run it in a container, okay? So nerdy control, the namespace, dash D for um, detached. And then I'm gonna give the port 8084, port 80. I'm gonna run the hello world image. Okay. So add dash p to publish containers port on the host. Um, let's run it there. So now we can just go to the um, your browser and go to that ad eighty four port. There you go. You can see a hello world message from Susacom. Okay. And if we go back, you can also check the container, the running container. Remember to add the namespace. And you can see all the running containers here and you should be able to find our container, hello world container. Um, there you go. There's a container ID. All right. Now, that's how you create a container with uh, Nerdy Control in Container D. Now, I'll just clean up a little bit and stop the, this container we just created. Okay, run same Nerdy Control namespace, and then I stop this container, and then I'm going to delete this container. I'm going to remove this container. All right. Um, now, if you run nerdy control .io, so this container is gone. Okay. This, this, there you go. You shouldn't find um, the Hello World container. All right. Now, let's take that same image and run it in a pod in my Kubernetes cluster. Um, I'm going to run kube control this time. So, kube control run, give it a hello world name, and then add my image, hello world latest. So, I just pass this flag to use the local image. Okay. 80. 
okay? And then I'm gonna run the port forward. Pause, hello world. Um, and this time I'm gonna run port 8085. 80. All right. Now the pod should be up. Now let's go to a browser with a port um, 8085. 8085. There you go. It's a hello world. Okay. So we've explored the images from uh, the UI and from the terminal with Nerdy Control. We also worked with both containers and Kubernetes from Rancher Desktop. The last thing I'd like to show you is the local Kubernetes dashboard, the K3S Kubernetes dashboard. So you could manage your local cluster with Kube uh, Control from this terminal, or you could use a graphical interface, okay? So you come here, come here, um, you click the dashboard here, okay? Um, so you can manage your uh, local cluster from here too. You could check your workload. You could deploy new applications here, use the uh, UI, or you could just import your YAML file from here. Okay, remember we just created a pod with um, kubectl command line. So you can find the pod from this dashboard. Let's go here and you can see this one's running, right? Okay, you can delete the port from here. I'm gonna delete this pod um, from the dashboard. And if you go back to your terminal, if you run um, kubectl get pod at all namespaces, that pod is gone. Okay. And if you go to your, um, this Kubernetes dashboard, if you go to your cluster, your node, and open the node there, you can see the images. You could see all the images that are available to deploy into Kubernetes. Okay, you can also see our Hello World image from there, right? And these are images in your um, ks.io namespace. So now I'm clicking the Rancher Desktop UI. Now go to the image, the namespace, this namespace, images under this namespace will show up in your, um, in your Kubernetes dashboard, okay? So you can configure uh, your Rancher desktop, upgrade Kubernetes clusters, and manage your container images from this Rancher desktop UI. And you can do all the Kubernetes operations from your Kubernetes dashboard. So the two different dashboard. All right. And that's the end of the demo. Rancher desktop is a great solution for you. Uh, to quickly spin up a container and Kubernetes environment and test code locally. So please download Rancher Desktop and try it. There is also a great community support in Slack under Rancher Desktop Slack channel where you could post your questions, okay? Or feel free to reach out to us. All right, everyone, I hope this session is informative. Thanks for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.